Hey guys, Wall for Games coming at you, and today I'm doing my first ever painting request. And the first request, wouldn't you know, how to paint clouds. There's no rhyme, no reason to how a clown should actually look. It could be fluffy, it could be thin, it could have no volume, it could be all over the painting. There is literally no rhyme or reason to how to paint a clown. Any way to paint a cloud is technically the right way, but when you start out, the biggest problem we all have is they kind of look like big giant globs of just white, no depth, no fluff, no nothing. And there's a lot of way to do clouds. You can use a two inch brush, you can use a one inch brush, you can use a fan brush, you can use a filbert, you can use a script liner. The possibilities are endless, but these are your three main tools that you're probably gonna use when you're starting out painting oil clouds. What I recommend is until you get a little more comfortable, the easiest way to paint a cloud is actually using this tool here. This is a number three fan brush and it's gonna be your best friend because not only does it give you nice fluffiness to your clouds, it gives you just enough manageability to outline a cloud and then correct it if you need to. When you get into these bigger brushes, it's a little hard and you don't have as much versatility in them. So let me show you how to actually paint a cloud that you're gonna be satisfied with. Let's go over to the canvas. Okay, to speed up the process, I went ahead and already put my magic white on my canvas paper. If you need to see how to do that, I actually made a video earlier of that. Go ahead and check out my playlist below. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in just a basic blue sky with some phthalo blue with a one inch brush and pull it down evenly with a two inch brush. Again, this is the same process I used in an earlier video if you'd like to check out that tutorial as well. So the first step that I recommend that not many people talk about is make sure you work off all the excess paint of your sky that you don't need actually push it into that canvas quite firmly so all that remains is the color that you want. If you have any excess residue or globs, it's gonna be a lot harder to lay down clouds on top of it. Let's start with background clouds. To do background clouds, all you need to do is take a little bit of color and add it to titanium white. I recommend if you're starting off, take a little bit of permanent rose or red or a lizard crimson and add it to your titanium white to get a nice light pink. Take your number three fan brush and wiggle it through all of that color and get it well loaded onto the brush. When you're starting out, you cannot have too much paint on the end of your bristles. It makes it a lot easier. Now that your fan brush is all loaded with paint and the paint is at the end of the bristles, let's talk about how you approach the canvas. Come at it parallel and then turn your wrist 15 degrees up or down. This will create some different effects with different crowns on the top of the cloud or a smooth bottom. I recommend experimenting and see which one you like more and you can mix it up anytime you want to. From here, all we're gonna do is small circles and we're only outlining the outside of the cloud. We don't care about what happens on the inside. Just do very small circles and get some nice lifts and let that paintbrush flick up and down and let all of the bristles attack the canvas. You do not have to push hard. If you have to push hard, add a little drop of thinner or any type of oil to your paint so that way it's a little smoother. From here, we're gonna take a clean two inch brush and use only the top part of the bristles to blend in the bottom portion of the cloud. We're gonna do very small circles and we're barely touching. As Bob says, two hair and some airs. But as a beginner, you're gonna have to push just a little bit harder. The more you blend, the more that cloud fades into the background. If you want it to fade even more, you can do very, very light crisscross strokes across the bottom or across the whole cloud. The more you do this, the more it will fade. From here, we're gonna give it some very nice lifts up, almost like check marks when grading a paper. This is a very light touch, and again, the more you do it, the more it's gonna fade into the background. From there, just work out the paint brush strokes that you did from all the different directions. I recommend going in from the right side, if your cloud's on the right, and pulling to the left, but it's completely up to you. The next step is one of the most important. You probably got some blue color on your paint brush. You don't wanna contaminate your paint. So what I recommend is take a extra piece of paper towel and work out that extra color that you're not gonna need. This is the most important step because you're gonna have colors blend that you don't want to blend. And it's an easy amateur mistake and took me a long time to figure out. Reload your brush and let's do another cloud on the left side here. 
Again, load all the paint into your paintbrush and outline the cloud. Try to give it a lot of crowns and movement in the cloud by going up and down and sporadically around. There is no rhyme or reason to a cloud. The only recommendation that I can give is start small. You can always add. It's very easy to get carried away with the cloud and before you know it, you have a big blob in the sky and it's very hard to take away. You almost have to scratch it away. Again, let's repeat the process with a two inch brush and using only the top parts of the bristles. We're gonna blend in just the bottom portions, not touching the top of the cloud at all. The harder you push, the more it's gonna blend into the background of the canvas. If you want it to completely dissolve into the background, you can actually do bigger, harder, circular motions there, and that'll fade most of the cloud into the back. And this can be a beautiful effect for a lot of skies out there. So give it a try. I generally use it on the outside of my canvases. That way the eye is drawn towards the center with sharper detail but it's completely up to you. And you can see how it just fades into the background there. Again, we're gonna cross stroke the bottom half of it and then give it a nice lift. And the lifts can be like your wind. They don't have to go in the same direction. You can mix it up in the same cloud or go left, go right, go up, go down. It's completely up to you and work out the paintbrush strokes. And there we have a beautiful cloud. Now let's say we want to add some clouds that looked a little closer to us. Well, that's quite easy. All we need to do is just take our number three fan brush again and add some titanium white to it. This is straight titanium white. And the easiest thing to do with clouds when you're starting out with titanium white, since it's a very firm paint, is load that fan brush up. You can see how nice and thick it is on my fan brush. And we're gonna bring the clouds just in front of our background clouds. And that's gonna help push those pink background clouds even further back. And wouldn't you know it, it's the same steps, just small circular motions. If you're gonna go over your paint clouds, make sure you use the thicker side of the paintbrush there so more paint sticks to the canvas. Because remember, you're already putting two layers of paint on. You've got the sky and you've got the clouds. Now, one big mistake that a lot of amateurs make is when they get to the edge of the canvas, they stop. Continue the cloud outside. Just because your canvas is in a frame doesn't mean the picture in your mind has to be. Continue it all the way outside the edge of the actual canvas. From here, you're gonna do the same steps and blend down with a two inch brush with small circles. Since these clouds are closer, you need a more diligent and soft touch here because these clouds will have a little more of a finer detail since they are closer to us with that perspective but follow the same steps with giving them a nice lift, blend out parts you don't like. If there's parts you mess up on, you can just push them back or blend them out or lift them up. The choices are completely up to you. If you get any globs in your paintbrush there, just take an excess paper towel or a rag and just grind them out or um, push them into the paper towel so that way they work themselves out and go ahead and finish up what you were doing with your canvas or your cloud. Another key note that I can give out to a lot of beginning painters out there is go slow. We all get in awe by how fast Bob Ross paints. We're never gonna be as good as him or as efficient because he's had so much practice. Go slow and enjoy the cloud. Think about how the outline actually is gonna form the cloud. Think about how light hits it. Think about how the wind is moving your cloud. These are all things to take in consideration when doing your clouds, and this will add a lot of detail. Once you finish your white cloud, go ahead and work out the blue paint that you pick up underneath because, we, again, we don't want to contaminate our paint when we go back to our titanium white to tackle another cloud. Let's put one more cloud over on the left-hand side here, and we're going to repeat the process. But this time, I'm going to give you a detailed close-up of how I blend and do the cloud. So I'm going to drop in a quick cloud here with a couple of high peaks and low peaks and a smooth bottom and push really hard on some good blobs just to show you how I blend it. Now that we're all close here, all I'm gonna do is take my two inch brush and I'm only gonna use the upper one fourth of the bristles and I'm very lightly just touching the canvas and doing circular motions to get that white to blend with the top of my crowns and getting it to blend with the bottom of the blue to give it a nice soft bottom. It's a very, very soft touch. If I wanna work it out, I just sit there and I blend even more and that'll make it silky smooth and blend into that background there. From here, I do the same steps of just cross stroking to push all of those 
clouds into the background even more, giving it a nice smooth bottom and cleaning up some of the mess of the circle strokes that I did. But I'm only concentrating on the bottom half. From here, I give a very light lift, just like we did before. And you can see how those blobs turn into nice crown movements, like wind is just gushing right through there. It's okay if you have some blobs right there on top, because it's going to look like highlights of sun are poking through and hitting those particular spots. If there's too much glob that gets on the end of your paintbrush there, just do what we said before and work it out on a paper towel. And just blend the cloud till you get it to where you like it. Some people like soft clouds, some people like harsh clouds. It's completely up to you. Just make sure you work out any of the paint brush strokes. If you get any extra blobs anywhere, you can just blend them out with your two inch brush. Don't worry, I got one right there, but it's easily taken away. Hopefully this guys helps you out a lot by seeing how close I got you with all this little detail and moments here. And you can see how our cloud has a lot of depth and a lot of movement in it. And once you've tackled everything, you know, have fun with it. Take some funky colors, you know, add some yellow, add some reds, add some oranges, add some extra white, and just play around on a blank canvas. Just literally go for it. Just tackle it, have fun. Don't think about the precautions. Just go for it and think about the outside shapes, learn to blend, learn to flick colors, have fun with it. Clouds are one of the most free and fun things to paint. And once you understand the basic techniques of it, you know, the possibilities are kind of just endless. You get to tackle and do fun things and add a bunch of different colors just like Bob does in all of his paintings. And you don't have to follow the rules, but when you learn some of the simple techniques, your paintings are going to look 50 times better because there's not going to be this eyesore in the sky. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I've been getting a lot of good feedback on these videos. If you guys want to see more, uh, let me know in the description below what kind of tutorials that you like to see. I'm up for anything. I'll try my best to get more educated in certain aspects or teach you ways where people aren't showing you the best way to do something or give you more details about that. Again, thank you guys so much. Go ahead and smash those like buttons, those subscribe buttons. You can also follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can even look at the description below for some of the supplies that I use through my affiliate links. They all help me out so much. If you guys want to take a moment, there's some other videos over there. Also spread the word. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next painting tutorial. Take care.